The guy's caught in a choke and he can't really see his face and communication becomes tough. You're left with body language if you're a referee. Really hard job. But they are trained at what to look for. And one of the things is the arms. What are the arms? If you're being choked, even a basic move is to get your hands in there and start pulling down on the choke. And his opponent's arms were stiff and straight and not defending the choke at all. His legs were kicking, however. They were doing like this bicycle kick. And I didn't know how to interpret that. From a medical standpoint, I don't know if when a person is unconscious, if they, if, if their nerves can tremor as well, like sometimes an animal can do. I don't, act, I don't actually know. But by what I was seeing was a guy out. At one point, the referee said, hey, I'm going to stop this. How are you doing? And the guy, ooh, he brought a thumbs up and then went right, down, right back to the stiff position with his arms. So it was a very confusing position. It just was. But his legs were moving, his eyes were open, and when he was called on for a response, he gave one. I have to give him that. This is my own teammate. He's taken on, but I have to give him that. That's what happened. Time ran out. And, boy, he looked out to me. I mean, again, he was stiff, but his eyes were open. He had a glazed look, but the eyes were open. He was trying to get up. He was not succeeding, but he was trying. If you're asleep and unconscious, you can't even try. So, again, even though it's my own teammate, I am tending to think, yes, this guy is in a very bad place from a loss of of oxygen, but he is awake. And as I understand the rule to be, that's all he needs to be unless the referee decides otherwise. right? Even on a knockout, you don't have to be out, and the ref can step in and stop and go, hey, you're in a bad place. I'm going to get in there and stop this fight. As I understand the rules, though, that is a referee's decision, and the referee made his decision to allow the fight to go. Somewhere in between rounds, they stopped the fight and said it was a technical knockout. And the powers that be, the head referee that night, and the commission themselves said, yes, that's the right call. So I was gearing up a little bit to figure out how am I going to defend my teammate. And I want to just be objective, and I'll call it straight, but... Something the referee saw and something the commission saw is something that the rest of us as fans are not aware of in terms of the rule. There must be some kind of a rule we don't know. New Jersey has a rule. Now, Nick Limbo came out and he clarified this, so here is the final answer. There, There is no more talk on it, but it didn't make as big a headline, so I'll clear it up for you. New Jersey has a rule that is you cannot be saved by the bell. Now, you would understand that maybe better from a boxing perspective. Say you and I were fighting and you knocked me down, and the ref is counting one, two, three, and all of a sudden the bell goes off. The count will continue four, five, six, seven. So technically the, the, the fight is still going even though the fight has stopped. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So that's all that had happened here is you cannot be saved by the bell. And when they came in, they deemed that he was unconscious. Now that is a referee's decision. The evidence that they have to go on. I think you could criticize. I also thought the guy was out, but I I cannot deny that his eyes were open and he was trying to get up. He was not succeeding. His body was not reacting the way it wanted to. I get all of those things, but there is still a difference from out where a guy's eyes are closed or he's unresponsive versus a guy who is trying to get up. He was also receptive to instruction where where the officials were telling him, do not move and stay down. So he did which he has brought up after the fact. The only reason I stayed down is because they told me. Now, if he was to tell this story a little bit more accurate, he'd have to say it like I did, which is I was trying and my body wasn't quite cooperating. And that's still not an out athlete, I don't think. But it does come back to a referee's decision and the decision was made. So I'm, I'm just clearing that up, that the rules were followed. The, the commentators had come on and tried to say, and they misunderstood. As I currently understand, they misunderstood that the referee claimed that he had stopped the fight prior to the horn, that the timekeeper did not recognize stoppage of said fight, therefore allowed time to go, and then blew the horn. That's how the announcers put it. But Nick Limbo, the final say in New Jersey, said no. Time had elapsed, but it was a a technical submission because you could not be saved by the bell. I'm just clearing that for you guys. I, I suspect we are going to see a protest in this matter. I suspect Sarah Longo will file a protest, and I would not blame them because that rule 
a lot of people don't know. And then you do have the how did you conclude that he was unconscious when his eyes were open, he was responsive, and he was moving. I don't know the answer to that. The referees will instruct us in the back. If I'm a little unclear on a situation, I may ask, uh, I may ask you to respond and make sure you do. Do not chalk up to I don't speak the language or I don't hear you. Let's make sure we establish this right now because if you are not responsive, I'm going to stop the contest. And every fighter has to agree to that or the referee will not leave the room. He will bring in an interpreter. He will bring in a manager. He will bring in a witness until he gets that athlete to say, I understand. So it's a very important part of our sport. I do have – so imagine you're the referee, though. He is showing the signs of unconsciousness with his upper body. They're stiff and straight. He's clearly in trouble, and he's not hand fighting, which would lead you to the conclusion it's because his body is not cooperating with his brain from a loss of air, hence the choke. However, his lower body is still fighting like hell, and the one time, because I'm not clear, half his body says go and half his body's telling me stop, so I'm just going to ask him straight up. And he responded with a thumbs up. Which means his upper body's working. I don't know how he did it because <laughs> right, I don't know how he did it. When he gave the thumbs up, the first thing I was thinking was, well, if you have that ability and that wherewithal, why aren't you hand fighting? You know. And then the other side of it, what could have Ricky done? He could have let the choke go, sat up in full mount, started dropping elbows, and the ref would have had to stop it on that occasion. So, but now you're just talking fiction. What could have happened? You can't base decisions on that. So ultimately you go to the referee's decision. It's just the right way to do it. And sometimes come for you and sometimes don't, but over the course of a career and a course of the support, they, it really evens out. And this is what the referee decided. So I think if they protest, I think that they will fail, but it, it could make a good storyline to get a rematch. It was a fantastic contest, and maybe that's what goes from here. But I, I did want to weigh in on that, even though it was an undercard fight because I was close to it. And I tried to stay objective, but I'm sharing with you what I saw and what the ruling by... Uh, Nick Limbo, who's in charge of New Jersey. I mean, it ultimately just comes down to what Nick says, and this is what Nick said. So I'm repeating it for you. 